So in this installment, we're going to look at how the pathologist tries to assign a prognostic category, really um, a histological grade to the neuroblastoma. So we mentioned that the tumor varies from lesions that are very undifferentiated, recapitulating very early stages in the sympathetic adrenal lineage, to area that show more, to, sorry, to tumor that show more differentiation with more n neuronal cells, more neuroblasts, and ultimately, and these could be poorly differentiated or differentiating, and then you start to get more Schwannian stroma and the neuroblasts look even more neural, and ultimately it becomes, when you have greater than 50% Schwannian stroma, it becomes either a ganglioneuroblastoma or a ganglioneuroma, which is totally benign based on, the, based on whether there are naked neurites or not. But that threshold of 50% Schwannian stroma is what makes it a ganglioneuroblastoma or a ganglioneuroma. But we also mentioned that initially pathologists had a hard time correlating what they projected as the histological grade, so the amount of maturation that they saw on the slide, didn't really help them prognosticate how the patients would do until Dr. Shimada said that you had to look at the extent of histological maturation in relation to the age of the patient. And because you're looking at the maturation in relation to the patient's age, it's not really a pure grade because it's age-dependent. And so for that reason, they called it um, a pathological categorization and basically into groups and the two groups that were created were favorable histology and unfavorable histology so basically um, in looking at a neuroblastoma we basically um, a, a standard pathologist looking at a neuroblastoma basically asked Dr. Shimada's questions and the questions are how differentiated is this tumor and then that's integrated with the age of the patient so basically the first question that, that we ask and this is based on the work of Dr. Shimada, is what is the percent of Schwannian stroma? So that's the first question, the most important question. What is the percent of Schwannian stroma? If the percent of Schwannian stroma is greater than 50%, it's not even a neuroblastoma anymore. It's either a ganglioneuroma or a ganglioneuroblastoma, depending on the presence or absence of naked neurites. But that's, we'll leave that out. We won't go into too much of that detail. That's really more subspecialist at that point. I really just want you to understand the, the, the broad concepts here. Um, so let's say, so if there's greater than 50% Schwannian stroma, then you've got a ganglioneuroma or a ganglioneuroblastoma, but not a true neuroblastoma. If there's less than 50% Schwannian stroma, then you do have a neuroblastoma. And once you've established that you have a neuroblastoma, the next question you ask is, what's the percent neuroblastic differentiation? If, so neuroblasts recall our cells that, remember your small round blue cell tumors look sort of like this, and as it becomes more neuroblastic, you have eccentric nuclei that are not as hyperchromatic, that are softer, softer chromatin, that have a, um, a nucleolus present and more eccentric, and these are the criteria for a neuroblast. If it's 0% neuroblastic, di neuroblastic differentiation, then it's an undifferentiated tumor. And these are uniformly bad. These are uniformly unfavorable histology, regardless of the patient's age. But if there's 1% to 5% um, neuroblastic differentiation, it gets called a poorly differentiated neuroblastoma. And greater than 5% is considered a differentiating neuroblastoma. And once you've established that you have one of these two, we that's where Dr. Shimada says you can't tell whether the patient will do well or not until you know the patient's age and uh, until you ask one more question. So the third question that Dr. Shimada tells us to ask is what is the mitotic karyorectic index? How many cells are dying and how many cells are in mitosis? You put those two together and there's a formula to come up with an index, number of cells per 5,000 that are in mitosis or karyorexis. And there's Shimada's classification and Joshi's classification and that helps you establish a number called an MKI. So you look at one of these categories, depending where you are, whether it's 1% to 5% or greater than 5%, um, and then you look at the MKI and you look at the patient's age. And there are these age cutoffs. So is a patient 0 to 18 months, 18 months to 5 years, or greater than 5 years. So you plug in the MKI, the patient's age category, we call this 1, 2, and 3, the patient's MKI status, the 
age category and whether it's poorly differentiated or differentiating into the algorithm and the algorithm will ultimately s split these into favorable histology or unfavorable histology and um, favorable or unfavorable histological characterization undifferentiated are always unfavorable histology and if the patient is greater than five years it's always unfavorable histology and that's how Dr. Shimada created this algorithm, and I don't think the details of the algorithm are more important. It's the understanding of the design of the algorithm that's important, especially at a pathology residency level. So it's, this is the design that Dr. Shimada did to allow us to, to, to put the patient into a prognostic group based on morphology. But then, um, you know, when Dr. Shimada talks, he's very, very open about the fact that as he's trying to prognosticate these tumors, the real question that he's asking is, does the tumor have the predilection to mature? Is this a tumor that's intractably a small round blue cell that'll never grow up? Or might it be that with increasing age of the patient, the tumor actually may not be such a primitive immature tumor, might acquire some maturation? So from a purely morphological, histopathological basis, either the schemata or lately it's been called the IMPCC classification, you put in your care classification scheme and the pathologist comes up with um, either an unfavorable histology or, 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 or a favorable histology. So if you come up with favorable histology, then the tumor is felt to have the predilection to mature. If, if your algorithm gives you an unfavorable histology, then the tumor is felt to not have the predilection to mature biologically. And it turns out that there's many other parameters that seem to correlate with this. So, for example, the tumors that have the predilection to mature tend to have a karyotype that's very aneuploid. In other words, the chromosome numbers are quite wrong. And they could be triploid or tetraploid. And these are actually good. Whereas, tumors that are near euploid, but that have certain amplifications, specific amplifications or deletions, in other words, architectural or structural problems with the chromosomes, these tend to have unfavorable histology. Then Dr. Schmidt also real, realized that the, there's a certain type of receptor in the maturation development of the neural system called neurotrophins. And I won't go into details of those, but it turns out that if the neurotrophin that's being used is track A, the neurotrophin receptor, I'm sorry, so it's a receptor on the neural cell that binds its ligand and causes cellular um, response that could either be apoptosis and, and, and maturation on the one hand or um, cell cycling on the other, if the tumor uses track A as its neurotrophin receptor, then it tends to be a good prognosis tumor. Whereas, if a tumor uses track B or C as its neurotrophin, it tends to be um, a tumor that's more intractably immature. Finally, and, and quite importantly, the amplification status of the NMIC gene. So, if the NMIC gene is non-amplified, the tumors tend to have the predilection to mature, and it tends to be in the favorable histology category. And, and if the tumor has amplification of the NMIC region, then it tends to be in the unfavorable category. And it so turns out that these things tend to go together. So if you look at these molecular and karyotypic features, they tend to go together with a favorable histological categorization. Whereas, this constellation of molecular and biological properties tends to go together with an unfavorable histological categorization by the Shimada algorithm. However, and this is sort of getting more modern and into areas of more active current investigation, there are some, area, there are some cases where the molecular characterization doesn't quite correlate with the um, histological characterization. And these are cases that Dr. Shimada calls discordant or genotype-phenotype 
discordant, because this is really your phenotype, and this is really your genotype, and he called these genotype, phenotype discordant, and that's an area of active investigation. But by and large, by and large, the favorable histology tumors tend to be um, quite aneuploid. They use TRAC A as their re re neurotrophin receptor, and NMIC is non-amplified, whereas if NMIC is amplified, and, and if you actually look at it, what we said, that these were tumors that were near euploid but had structural abnormalities. And in fact, the, one of the most common structural abnormalities is exactly this, the NMIC amplification. So we see it all goes together. And that's, in broad strokes, the um, way a pathologist looks at a neuroblastoma. And it's actually quite pretty because the pure morphological ca characterization, once age is taken into account, correlates with the underlying biology of the tumor. And that really is the brilliant contribution of Dr. Shimada. And with that, I'll end this series.